What's up guys, today I'm going to show you how to make your own plot system like in Girl Garden or any single popular game where you load into the game, get chosen a plot, and then you load into that plot, and then this sign out front will show your name and like your profile picture and all that. And I've personally used this system in games getting over 17 million visits, and in every single game that I need to use it, I pretty much just copy and paste the whole thing because it's super easy to do. Okay, so starting off, I'm just gonna make a new Roblox game so we can start brand new and sh I can show you guys exactly how to do this. So the first thing I'm gonna do in this game is go over here and create a server script in the server script service. And I'm gonna name this script plot loader. Now, the first thing I wanna do in here is get the replicated storage. Okay, so we're gonna get replicated storage. All right, and then using this, the first thing we want to do whenever the server loads up is create a folder in replicated storage where it'll hold all the players and their plots that they have. So what I'm going to do is create a new folder called plot holders, and then we can create this by doing an instance dot new folder. And then down here we can do plot holders dot parent equals replicated storage and then set the plot holders dot name equals plot um, holders like that. So now that we have created this folder, whenever a player loads into the game, we want to assign them a plot number and have them load into that plot and then change the, the sign out front and whatever. So if you guys already have a script that runs whenever the player loads in, like something that loads in their data or something like that, you can just add this on top of that, which is what I do in my own games. And at the end of the, this video, I'll show exactly how I do that. But right now, I'm just going to create a simple script that is going to check whenever a player loads in and it's going to assign them a plot. So what I'm going to do is come up here and get the players service um, and get the game get service players just like that and then down here we're going to go players dot player added connect a function and then player and so this is just going to run every time the player loads in and now what we want to do is assign the players plot so what i do for this is create a for loop where i loop through it um, six times you can change this number to 12 or whatever you want but in most games they only have six plots so I'm just gonna do six plots as the basis so then what I'm gonna do is check if a player already has this plot number so it's gonna start at one and then go all the way to six and check each one and check if um, that number has a player that's already on that plot so what I'm gonna do is if plot holders comma find first child I then we're just gonna continue so we're gonna skip past this one we're not gonna use it um because a player is already holding or is already occupying that plot so then down here um if we end up getting past this part that means that this number is open to assign this player's plot so what i can do here is assign the the plot to the player and take it up in this folder so how i'm going to do this is local claim plot equals and we're going to create a new instance and have this be an object value so then oh so then what we're going to do is set this object value uh, as a parent to the Oh, dot parent equals the plot holders. So now this will be inside of this folder we created in replicated storage. And what we want to do is set the name of this to the I number. So the index that we're looping through. So that'll be the, um, the uh, plot number. And then we're going to set the value to the, um, the player. So this plot, oh, not players, we want to be player. So now this value, We'll hold the player's number, uh, we'll hold the plot number as its name, and then the player as its value. So then now what we want to do is if we wanted to get the player's plot in another script, um, it would be pretty annoying to loop through this entire folder and check which um, object value actually holds the player. So what I usually do and what I'm going to do right now is create a plot number value under the player. And you can house this in a folder or something, but I'm just gonna do it inside the player just for simplicity. So what I'm gonna do is plot number and create this as an instant or as an um, as an int value, like just like that. So then what I'm gonna do is set this plot num number dot name equals plot number. And then we're gonna set this plot number dot parent to the player and then all i have to do whenever i assign the plot is down here we're just going to go plot number dot value equals i and then so we don't loop through and assign every single plot to the player we're just going to go break at the end whenever we do assign this plot so this will break this for loop so it won't go from like one all the way to six if we already assign the plot number at um, value one 
And so that's pretty much it. So if we run the script, um, we can check in this plot holders value, there is a one object value that holds our player. And then if we go under the player, you can see the plot number, which is also one. And so now what we can do is load this player actually into the plot. So how we're going to do this is go in here and how I like to organize it is I have my, my map like this. And I guess for uh, tutorial sake, we can just pretend the map is the base plate. Uh, and then inside this, I have a plots folder just to make it super simple. And then inside this plots, I have each plot labeled with a number. So plot number one, and then we're going to go two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and we can change all these numbers two, three, four, five, six. So just like this is how I have it labeled. And then you guys can add whatever you want in these plots. Like if you have a grow a garden game, you can add a garden or something like that. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add teleport. So we're just going to do add a part. And so this will be the teleport part. So whenever you load in, we're going to sign your plot and then teleport you to this part. So we have this, this part here and you can make these anywhere. I think I'm just going to space them out. So I'll just duplicate this, add it to two and then move it over here, duplicate, move this one over here. And then let's pretend we go to the other side, just like this. So that'd be four. And then this one will go to five and then one more at six. So just like that, now we have all the teleport. So if we get plot number one, we're going to have to teleport the player here. Um, and I have them all labeled the same, uh, which is very important because if you have plot one, you want to be plot one dot teleport and then teleport here, uh, if that makes sense. Okay, so now what we want to do is after we assign this player's plot number, we want to teleport them to their plot, um, which will be from this teleport part. So what we want to do is anytime the player's character loads in, we want to teleport them. So we're going to go player dot character added and then connect a function uh, that has the character. So this will just run anytime the player's character is added. So if they die or anything, it's going to, um, we're just going to teleport them back to their plot. So what we can do here is get the, um, the plot folder that we have. So we're going to go local plot folder equals workspace dot map dot plots, and then comma find first child plot number dot value. So just like that, that'll get one of these folders, whichever one uh, that is our plot number. And then what we want to do is get the teleport part for that folder. So local teleport part equals plot folder dot teleport. And then, so this is pretty much why we named all of them teleport, as you can see here, because we're going to get the plot folder and then get the teleport part. So now what we want to do is move this character to this teleport part. Okay, so we're going to go character, comma pivot to teleport part dot C frame. So this is pretty much just getting the, the teleport parts position and teleporting the player to there. So now if we load in, uh, we get plot number one. And as you can see, we teleported to this part. And if this was an actual game, let me just set this up. So if this was a, like one of my actual games, I would make this part transparent, set the can collide to off and anchor it. And I would move it up a little bit. So if now if I load in, as you can see, we don't touch it. Like it's kind of annoying if you would see a, a gray part here. But there is one thing we didn't check for, and that is if there is too many players in the game. So you guys might be like, what? You can't get more than six players in the game if you set it as six players. But sometimes Roblox can glitch and more than uh, six or 12, however many people you have in your game, it can happen. So what we want to do is check if that did happen. So what I'm going to do here is if plot number dot value equals zero, then uh, because as you can see up here, we create this int value and the default value of an int value is just zero. Um, so what I'm going to do here is player comma kick, and then we're just going to say max players in game. So this should, should never happen to a normal player. As long as we unload the plot, right? Uh, this will set the max players in the game or say that there's max players in the game and then kick the player and be like, you can't get here. Okay, so now that we've pretty much loaded in the player and teleported them to the correct spot, what we want to do now is um, update the sign. So if we have a sign out front that's going to say like sup doggy and then show my profile picture, we want that to have right or to happen right here. So what I'm going to do is quickly create a little sign. So what I can do here is 
um, this is our plot, our plot sign. And what I'm going to do is group this as a model and call this sign. And then this will be the sign for the plot number one. And you guys should have one for each plot that you have, but I'm just going to do it for the first plot because you guys should get the point. And then how we're going to make this sign is go in here and we're going to change this part to be called player um, display, I guess we can call it player display. And then in here, we're going to add a surface GUI surface. So surface GUI, just like that. Uh, which side is this on? Oh wait, we haven't added anything. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> let's just add an image label. Okay, so it's on the wrong side. So what we want to do here is it's right here. So what we want to go in here and change this face to be, let's just go left. Uh, and it's over here. All right, this is fine. So this is going to be our player icon. So we're going to name this player icon. And then let's set the anchor point to zero. Uh, let's go zero comma 0 0.5. And then we can just set this to be in the middle. And then let's set it a little bit off of the the side. And then we can just set the size to 0.3 and make it YY. And just like that. Um, and so now we can set this background transparency to one and this image to nothing. So now it'll be like this. But whenever we do have a player's um, icon on there, it'll be this size. So I'm just going to keep this here so we can add the, the player text. So next. Uh, just like I said, we're going to add this text here and this is going to be for the player's name. So we're going to go 0 0.0 comma 0.5 again. Let's set the position to like 0.3 and then set the size or the other position to 0.5. And let's actually move this over a little bit. Um, boom. And then let's just go like 0.6, just like that. Looks pretty good. Uh, background transparency to one. And then down here, this will be... Um, blank blanks plot okay and we're just going to set the text scaled and change the font maybe to a nice Montserrat bold there we go so this is going to update and say sup doggies plot whenever i load in um so i'm just going to set this background transparency to one and this surface gui to not enabled because whenever we don't have a player here uh we don't want someone to see underscores plot uh, so now in this script, what we want to do is update all this code or update all this um, stuff right here. So after we load all this stuff for the player, what we want to do is update this sign. So now the sign is going to actually what we can do first is set this plot folder. Um, let's copy this and then paste it right out here. So now we can use it down here whenever we update this sign. So what I'm going to do is get this sign so local sign equals um, plot folder dot sign um, and then in this sign we want to change the player icon and this text label actually let's name this text label to player name uh, so first thing I'm going to do is actually change the player name that we just changed so let's go sign dot player display dot surface gy dot player name just like that and then dot text and now this should equal the player's name and then we're going to add a apostrophe s and then um plot so if you guys have like a factory or a garden you can do sup doggy garden or factory or whatever you want here uh this will just show on this side right here and then what we want to do is actually change this player icon to the player's icon. Okay, so what we're going to do is get the, uh, let's set some variables first. So we're going to get the local thumbnail type equals enum dot thumbnail type um, dot headshot. And then we're going to get the thumbnail size and let's enum dot thumbnail size dot size. Uh, and then what I like to do is 420 by 420. Uh, so this will give us a nice high quality thumbnail. And then to get the actual player's thumbnail, what we're going to do is local content comma is ready. And these are just the two variables that this will return, but we're going to go players, oh, players comma get user thumbnail async. 
And what we have to um, put into this is the player dot user ID and then the thumbnail type and the thumbnail size. So now this will return uh, this content here is going to be the um, player's icon. So now what we can do is go to the sign and then dot player display dot surface GUI dot player icon dot image equals content or no content. Uh, or you can name this something like player icon and then just copy this and put it here. Um, so then after you do all that, the last thing you want to do is sign dot player display dot surface GUI dot ena enabled equals true. OK, so now it'll be enabled and then we load in. Boom. There we go. Sup doggy devs plot. And here's my icon. As you can see, it's my my skin. So now we have our plot loaded and everything here is great. We teleported. And if I wanted to uh, make this work for other plots, I could just duplicate the sign, move it over here uh, and then put it in the number two spot and then say I load it into uh, plot number two. So we start at two. Um, as you can see, I load here and it loads here and there's nothing over there. So it works. Uh, hallelujah. So now that we have all of this stuff loaded in, I'm going to set this back to one so we don't forget later. And now what we want to do is when the player leaves, we want to unload all this plot stuff. So we want to delete this plot number. We want to um, delete it from the plot holders and reset this sign so it doesn't show our players um, stuff anymore. So what I'm going to do down here is create another function just like this for when the player leaves. So let's go players dot player removing and then connect a function and that will also give us the player. And now up here is useful whenever we added this pl plot number because now we can just get it down here. So what I'm going to do is local plot number equals player. I always do that player dot um, plot number dot value. So now that's going to be our plot number. And then what we can do here is remove um, the claim plot from the plot holders. So how I'm going to do this is we're going to go local plot claimed equals plot holders comma find first child and let's go plot number. And then we're just going to go plot claimed destroy because the player's leaving. So we no longer have to have that there. And then the last thing we want to do is reset this sign. So what I'm going to just going to do is set this surface GUI enabled to false. So what we can do is works or let's go local um, player plot equals workspace dot map dot plots and then find first child plot number. And then in the player's plot, we're going to go and get these signs. So the player sorry, player plot dot sign dot player display dot surface gy dot enabled <laughs> and then make this false. There we go. So now when the player leaves, we're going to get the player's plot number that we had stored up here and then we're going to um, destroy the value in the plot holders and then we're going to reset the sign so it, it does not show. So now when we load in, as you can see here, uh, this happens. And then if I leave, um, you can't see it, but the sign would reset back to this and our plot holders folder would go back to looking like this. All right. And I think that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, if you guys like this tutorial and want to see more like this, please like the video and subscribe. I think I'm going to link this model in the description. If you guys have any um, errors or anything, you guys can just download it and use it in your own game so you didn't really have to follow this tutorial but i thought it would be good to explain everything anyway uh so you guys get a good cohesive tutorial and you will know how to do it in all future um contexts so anyway that's going to be it for me thank you guys so much for watching please subscribe i'm going to be making so many more tutorials like this and comment down what you want to see next uh, but anyways thanks for watching